So you have to assume something's gonna go wrong, something's gonna break, but overall, replacing the media in this tank took about two hours. This is how to change the media or resin in your water softener. It's something you can totally do by yourself. So let's get started. Step one with plumbing in your house is always know where the main water shutoff is. Something goes wrong, you have to shut off water to the whole house. Let me do this one right here. So now I'm shutting off all the water to the house. Now I'm going to also shut off water to just this softener. So there's two in and out. So I'm going to shut off those valves as well. Now a big set of pliers and a bucket will disconnect the softener. So that's all the water draining out of this pipe. So it's always good to have bucket and rags. Now it's disconnected and I should have said first unplug it. So uh, do that first. Next you want to unhook the hose that goes to the salt tank and the drain hose and you can use a small crescent wrench for that. It is now completely disconnected, we can go empty it. Now you gotta kinda hold this steady and unscrew the top. It's not on that very hard. Now when you start to lift up, it'll be connected to this down tube. You can disconnect that and the top is now off. But one thing I wanted to note is be careful on the bottom here. There's a rubber gasket, a rubber o-ring. You don't want to set that down or get messed up. We want to protect that so it seals nice when we put it back on the tank. Next, I'm going to do a check because I'm not 100% sure I have the right amount of resin. So I'm going to measure down and determine where that resin is in the tank. So right about there, 25, 26 inches from the top. So I'm hitting resin 25 or 26 inches from the top here. So when I fill this back up, I'm going to be dumping that bag in there. And when I hit about 25 or 26 inches, I should be at the end of the bag. But that's just another good check to have. Here's that down tube. You can see uh, my water. It's kind of clean down here, and it's just black up here. I've seen lots of different ways to do this. Some people use a garbage bag. Some people go outside and dump it in a garbage can. Um, I'm putting it in five gallon buckets because I want to, again, make sure of the amount of resin uh, that I'm putting back in. So that was about four gallons of water and I haven't even gotten to the resin yet. Probably about six gallons of water and I'm first just now getting the resin to fall out. So I have this tank about 99% empty and what most people do is we'll go out in their yard and hose it out. Unfortunately it's February here in Michigan and that's not possible. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of water to the tank, slosh it around and dump it out until everything's out. Keep doing that two or three times. So cleaning this off and making sure this vent, uh, this screen is nice and clear and not clogged up. Just using a wire brush to get anything out that's stuck in there, but mine looks okay. I can see through the tiny little openings, so. This is good to be reused. Now we're ready to start refilling the tank and step one is uh, reinserting that dip tube and then just using masking tape you uh, tape off the top so none of that resin gets in there. 
Some people use saran wrap uh, tape, some people use uh, little caps, anything works. And I can feel when I put this down, there's kind of like a little uh, indentation where that point of that cap sits in there. And a big concern I had was, I've seen a lot of these videos where people will put gravel in the bottom. Like almost like a pea gravel a few inches in the bottom. That's only for certain circumstances. Mine didn't have gravel in it. I'm not going to put gravel back in it. Um, it's only certain circumstances where you need to put that layer of gravel in there. I think it was industrial applications, bigger tanks. So mine is just straight resin, no gravel in there. And just to show you the differences in the resin, this is what uh, looks like after at least five years. I'm guessing about ten years of not being changed. And this is the brand new resin. Just from looking at the two resins, one is obviously rusty colored and one is a lot more clear or crystal white. And then feeling them, the old resin clumps together kind of like wet beach sand and the new stuff is, feels like real slippery ball bearing. So I'm glad I'm going to be changing it out today. Now we're ready to fill this back up and you can buy a filter that goes on here but everybody just makes their own. So I'm going to use uh, the laundry detergent jug and uh, use this scooper to fill it up with that. Okay, that took about uh, 10 minutes to fill it all up. And one thing to note is first, be careful if you're doing this on a concrete floor because those tiny little cylinders act like ball bearings and it creates a really slippery floor. Um, next is, remember we dumped out six gallons of water and the media was about six gallons as well. So I dumped the one cubic foot of new media in here and before we measured down 25 inches, and now I'm hitting it at about 20 which makes sense that other media was really compacted and pressed down so this is a little bit more fluffed up I feel happy with uh, checking that measurement now we're ready to put it back in place and fill it up with water Take a rag and clean all the threading on the inside and on this unit. You don't want any little debris when you're screwing it on. You want to take some food grade lubricant and put it on that top seal of the tank and on the o-ring on the bottom of the unit and on that inner part too where the dip tube connects. Before we had six gallons of media or resin and six gallons of water. Right now we have six gallons of the new media we still have to put six gallons of water in. So what we could do is we could just take a jug and fill up six gallons. I'm gonna do it through the tank. So I'm gonna fill it up, turn all the water in the house on, slowly crack open the valve and let it fill up that way. So we have all the grease on here and we're ready to screw this back on, reconnect all the pipes. Okay, I can feel it getting a little bit tight now and I'm just gonna give it a couple little pushes just like that. Not too hard. It doesn't need to be super tight. That'll be fine. So now we can get it back in place and connect all of our other hoses. Okay, we have all the pipes hooked back up. And next, I'm gonna plug the unit into the wall. And now we have, again, we have the whole house water turned off and the two valves. Next, I moved it from in service to bypass mode. So it is completely in bypass mode. Next, I'm going to open up water to the whole house slowly. Next, I'm going to open up the two valves to the softener slowly. Listening and checking for leaks hearing weird gurgling noises. Now I'm going to put it into regen mode and crack this valve just a little bit. So put it into service just a little bit 
and put it in a regen. So you can hear water filling up. I only cracked it a little bit and I put it into regen mode and I'm going to let that run for four minutes. So I can hear it running, I can hear water dripping in. Crack that open a little more. Let water fill up. Okay, now it is completely on. It's in off bypass on service mode. Still in regen and I'm gonna let it run on regen. Then I'm gonna go open up some faucets in the basement, like a, a shower or a sink faucet in the basement. Again, run that to get all the air out of the line. You can see all this black, dirty water coming out of there. So everything's hooked up, turned back on. I'm just gonna let it through, run through that regen and backwash cycle and we're good to go. Uh, overall, it took uh, around maybe two hours. If nothing goes wrong, but usually something does go wrong, uh, you forget a bucket or a towel, something leaks, something breaks. But you can do this in about two hours um, all by yourself. So I hope this helps, thanks.